Let's just sew whatever. We are gonna get started on cutting out the Bella bucket bag um, from Orosa Patterns, which I probably already said, so why am I repeating it? Um, but I think it's really cool the way that she has started developing her patterns to contain packs so that you can take it in small little chunks. Like if you have hardly any time to sew, you can be like, okay, I'm just gonna get through pack one and then move on like, <clears throat> and it'll be okay. Um, every piece has a label and then every piece even has um, measurements if that is what you need. So I absolutely love that. Um, as always, I have added some tape to my cut chart on the pieces so I can mark them off as I go. Um, Alexis has really kind of developed her patterns to help a myriad of learning styles. So I'm just going to measure my test square and then I'm gonna start cutting these pieces. Um, this dashed line here is gonna be where you connect another pattern piece. So what I like to do is kind of cut at an angle up to and then cut around the pattern piece. Um, I learned a little trick from my friend Nikki. I feel like so many people come to Nikki for her, her ex extreme knowledge and some of it is like, well, that's just common sense, but like some of us just don't have it and Nikki does. Um, but when you are measuring your test square, there are some patterns where the test box measures three inches from the outside of the black line to the outside of the other black line, which means if you want your pattern piece to truly be the same size as the designer intended it, <clears throat> you're going to be cutting right outside that black line. And then there's some that it's kind of like in the middle, which is about what Alexis's is. So when you're cutting that, you have some wiggle room. Like you can cut in the middle of the black line. And then there's some that it's inside the black line. So just if you want your pattern to be as accurate to what the pattern designer intended, check when you're measuring that test box where inside that um, your measurement falls. <clears throat> okay, so now this piece, I've already got a good connection underneath. So I'm able to just cut at the tapered, or on the dotted line, just right under it. Alexis mentions that the Peltex was able to like turn and settle better than Decaville Heavy or Light. Um, at least that's what I thought I read at four in the morning when I was reading it over. <clears throat> but we shall see. I, I'm like, I don't know about Peltex anymore but all interfacings have their time and place, so we'll see. Maybe I will. Um, but a pattern is written by the designer and for best results, absolutely follow what the designer has instructed because they know what they want the finished pattern to be, you know? <clears throat> They've designed it in such a way that the finished result will yield what they envisioned. Um, but I'm here a lot of times to be like, cool vision, here's mine. <laughs> and I don't think um, Alexis really watches the tutorial. She's just, like, she's a mom, she doesn't have time for that. Um, but it always makes me laugh seeing the bags that she creates. And then here I am, um, you know, to really put a wrench in that, just like, yeah. It, it just makes me laugh. 
<clears throat> I love that the bottom is a full piece and I'm kind of wishing I'd cut this out on cardstock, but I was printing it from my phone and I was like, okay, that's for later. And then as you're cutting them out, if you wanted to, you could even kind of say, all right, this is my stabilizer pile, this is my vinyl pile, lining pile. kind of throwing it all together and then I'll figure it out. I do think it's fun that she has test squares on every single page because sometimes printers do some crazy things and you never know. Or sometimes people just need to print out one page again and you know any scenario is possible. So I love that Alexis over the years of designing has really thought of everything and has a very extensive and wide testing team to kind of help her along. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those helpful testers, um, but she tolerates it. So thanks, thanks Alexis. I don't believe after reading this pattern through that waterproof canvas would be the best choice for your lining. Um, there is a center divider and there's quite a bit of layers within that and I, I believe a cotton print <clears throat> interfaced would probably yield the best results. I'm going to be using a water resistant canvas. Um, I thought about using a cotton or even like a waterproof cotton, but those are just, they're too thick. So a water resistant canvas or a lighter weight waterproof canvas is definitely going to be your friend here. The waterproof canvas that I carry does have a PVC backing. So a lot of times it is on the thicker side, um, but I know like Fabric Therapy sells a water resistant canvas, nope, waterproof canvas that is thinner and doesn't have quite that thick PVC backing. Um, there's also like the nylon fabrics are really popular for linings right now and I haven't used them enough to know, but I don't feel like they're going to add structure for the bulk they take. I don't know. Um, there are definitely bulk saving techniques within this pattern as Alexis does right for domestic users um, and uses a domestic machine herself to make all these bags. So that's good. Is this all the pages? I think it might be. I don't know why I was like, well, this is gonna take forever, but I think that is correct. I was like, why is my phone in sleep mode? Because I was asleep. Okay. So the way I like to do, I like to read through my patterns is I will print out the instructions or I'll print out the pattern pieces and then I keep all the instructions on my phone. It's just a lot to print. Yeah, that's it, okay, cool. I really expected that to be more, but a lot of it is rectangles, 
squares. Um, and it doesn't look like this pattern has pattern pieces for that. So if that is not something that works for you, um, you can make templates. I've seen a lot of people recommend that. They're like, oh, you can just make a template for that pattern piece and yeah. I get it though. It's not, it's hard as a designer to please all sides uh, and needs, especially when Alexis has already done so much, but I have gotten messages from people who are like, it's just an accessibility thing. Like I am not able to measure out these big long pieces easily. So I just, I think that's interesting. Um, so within the pattern, she goes over what part of the bag is what, so that you can plan out what your bag is going to look like. And I think that's really cool. That's so cool. I was like, okay, cool. Um, so the handle is actually like um, two pieces, like two separate straps sewn together. So I think I'm gonna cut one out of this and one out of this. I think that'll be really fun. Um, and yeah, we'll just work our way through kind of deciding what piece is gonna be what in the end. Um, it looks like her divider she does have out of the vinyl, which is kind of cool. So I'll probably do that. Um, the materials that I have chosen are a mid-weight printed Lux vinyl from my website. You, you can see that backing. It's very leather-like. It's soft, it's pliable, it is domestic friendly. And then I have what I call accessory weight vinyls. So they're half the thickness of our other vinyls, um, just about half I should say. So again, very domestic friendly and also kind of slouchy, um, but isn't going to add bulk, but still will add structure. Um, and these do have a similar texture of just like a very gentle pebbled look. Um, I love them, toot toot, but anyway. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna have my exterior main panel be this print, and then the lower panel I'm gonna have be this solid vinyl. I'm probably going to do the top of my lining in this, and then my zipper panel in this and just kind of mix and match where those prints line up and create some fun looks. Um, instead of Peltex, I think I'm gonna do Decaville Light. I know my materials well enough to know that the Decaville Light will adhere well to this and it's gonna give it structure without it being like bulletproof bag, like Boom. Peltex would also give a similar outcome because it's thinner, thinner than like Decaville Heavy. Like it's not as dense. It's a little more lightweight and springy, but I don't know. I just have really bad experiences with Peltex from my beginner bag making days. So I'm not going to do it. Um, but if you have Peltex on hand, I know that you would be happy with your results. Dorothy stole my Expo marker, please hold. The way Alexis has designed the slip pocket for this bag is really interesting too. Um, I wasn't at first going to follow it. And then I was like, no, I will. I think it'll look nice. So I'm just dividing my stabilizer pieces and my final pieces, etc. And then I'm going to be working through the cut chart with the pattern pieces as I go. Um, so you can choose to either do a handle, like a grab handle, or you can do a long strap. Um, so I am going to be doing the handle, not the strap. Although you can do both. Like, I think she just mentioned that for photos, it's a bit much to do both in the picture. Okay, so there's 24. Close enough.
And then while I'm here, I'm gonna prep the strap just so when I get to my sewing machine, it's so much quicker. So these end up being half an inch wide to create a one inch strap. And this is one, if you're creating a strap like this, you really would want the strap end hardware. So I actually might need to get that. I don't think I have any in my house. All right, so I've got one of my two done, so I'm just gonna mark that off because I'm moving on to my main panel now. And then like if your vinyl is a bit thin, it does say you can use extra of your woven interfacing. And be careful when you're cutting on the fold. I think I'm gonna trace this out instead. beans. My angle isn't quite right. So try again. Let me use a different color pen since I messed up my trace line the first time. If you are not great with a rotary cutter on kind of eyeballing as you're cutting, you can use a ruler, especially along the straight edges. Oh. And then if you want to switch to scissors, you can. And then for curves, I move the fabric and kind of keep my rotary cutter and my wrist straight. Oh yeah, that's gonna be so pretty. I'm putting that on my heat press because I do need to add stabilizer to it. And then I need two of these pieces this won't quite fit there, so I'll use that for something else. Keep in mind, if your print is not directional, you could flip these pieces. This print is kind of directional, so I'm not gonna do that. It's not like you're wasting a ton of fabric. But like if you're using cork, that's expansive. So that is all that I will need of that pattern piece. I'm just going to clip that back there and I can mark off that I cut out my main panels.
There is also some prep work that is needed on your pattern piece that you could do at the cutting table as well as far as like marking out those lines. We need to make a three eighths inch line along the top edge. And so if you need to, you could use your ruler to just kind of follow along. It won't be pretty, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It's the um, stabilizer that needs to be perfect. This is actually just like a cut, a snip line, I should say, for your curves. Uh, so it's not perfect by any means, but I just kept my ruler up at the top. But what we're going to be doing is like folding, snipping, and then folding. Otherwise, your curve won't look gorgeous. This is a drop-in <clears throat> lining bag. So that is why. Okay. So I'm not going doing, I'm not going doing, I'm not doing the bottom trim in this print. I'm not doing the bottom and I'm not doing the lining trim. The slip pocket trim would look cute and the divider trim, definitely. So I'll do that slip pocket trim piece. Mark off that that is done. Connectors. I can definitely get connectors out of this little spot. two of those. The recessed zipper panel is one of those that like folds onto itself. So your exterior also becomes your lining. And this is not a very big piece, so that's kind of cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this straight. I like that idea. I'm gonna read the pattern for this section. It could be a quarter of an inch. It could be one inch that we fold that to. So we'll see.
Oh, okay, there's a stabilizer piece. Um... Yeah, so it's, oh, it's half an inch. Oh, but it would be, yeah, one inch. A little strip of deck of the light, I don't know. I'll go ahead and do it. Um, but um, it's hard for me to like feel that, but I guess it's just because it's such a rigid bag that you want your zipper panel to be really rigid as well. All right, recessed zipper panel, got it. The divider trim, I also want to be this piece. So that might be, I think that's the last piece I'm gonna need out of this fabric. One, two, three, four. And then no stabilizer on this. All right, so that is it for my print. I think if I make like an actual handle for it, I'm gonna use the coordinating webbing that I have for this fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my handle, my other handle piece. These are just slightly different thicknesses, so I'm curious how that's going to play out. I think it'll be fine. And the bottom trim does get Peltex stabilized to it as well, or whatever stabilizer you are using for the bag. Okay. I'm so used to saying these measurements out loud and I can't, so that's why it's taking me a while to <laughs> lay this down. Okay, yes. The bag seems large in the photos I've seen, but I don't know that it's really like massive, you know? Oh, it's a really nice size. Okay. We're adding that to my pile. Bottom trim. I, I'm debating if I use, okay, so she is saying to use Peltex in the top and bottom, but I'm wondering if I use Decaville Light and then Decaville Heavy, what that would <clears throat> end up playing out. So I might try that. Might just try it. So I want to trace this pattern piece out on the wrong side. And then cut 
You do not need your lining cut out of this because the divide, like, I'm really excited to sew the lining together, to be honest. Like, it seems like such an interesting construction. And what's fun about the microfiber backing on this Lux Vinyl is that it kind of sticks to your paper. There is the bottom. And so I'm done with that. Just clip that under. It's so satisfying to like check off your list. You're like, mm hmm, getting everybody for Christmas. It's interesting to me that there is no stabilizer on this piece, but I don't think it's that serious that it has. Ooh. And this is a similar situation to our exterior where you need to measure and mark. So instead of doing what I was doing, <laughs> you can also make a little three eighths inch mark on either side. And even in the center if you need to, and then just lay this piece down at that mark and then trace it. Wow. Wow. It literally probably says to do that in the pattern and I was just like, what? Huh? Okay. Okay, so we make that three and then a one inch. So we're gonna be folding it down to the one inch. So now I'm making three registration marks to then lay my pattern piece. And this is why I would recommend doing it at your cutting table because you have the pattern piece here. You might not have it at the sewing machine. Okay, so this is our notched areas that will fold and tape first. Yeah. No stabilizer needed. And then we do it again. And now if you want to make some kind of like keychain or cut your connector out of this area, you can, or you could say heck it, trace it this way and have Maybe less waste, who knows. No, I was like, do I want to make a keychain for the bag? No.
I'm repeating that 3 8 inch measurement. And then again, the one inch. Could have also just screwed the pattern piece down and then measured that, but whatever. And this is my notching area. Boop -a -doo. Look at all the seagulls. Okay, that is our lining top trim. That means we're out of vinyl pieces we need to cut. <laughs> Before I move on to the interior pieces that I need to cut. I'm going to go ahead and cut out my stabilizers. I've had my heat press on since I started cutting and I want to be able to turn it off. And none of my lining pieces require interfacing because I'm using water resistant canvas. So I'm going to grab my Decaville light. I'm using this on the main panel the connectors and the recessed zipper panel. And then I'm using Decaville Heavy for my bottom trim and my bottom. I have some Peltex. And I am gonna grab a piece. If you've not used Peltex. This is Peltex. So like, it's, it's not as dense as Decaville Heavy. It's kind of springy, but it's also like, not that it's crinkly, but it doesn't like, I don't know, it doesn't have as much finesse as Decaville does to me. And not that I'm a Decaville snob, it's not that serious. If you have Paltex, use it. I know Alexis knows what she's talking about. I'm just like, I don't know. I can't do it, so here we are. <laughs> so I'm gonna trace out my main panel stabilizer. So this is going to get centered on your main panel so that you have one inch along the top edge and I'm just going to measure three eighths of an inch for this, trace it out. Okay. 
And that is my trim two line. I'm gonna let my deck of the light cool before we mess with it. Um, some places say to wait like, not some places, but um, I have read that you should probably wait up to like 24 hours after fusing, oh, goodbye forever, um, to manipulate and sew with your pieces. And that's probably not a bad idea if you have time for that. It makes sense to like really let the glue set. If your print is light, um, probably don't use <laughs> pen to outline things, because you're gonna see it. That is all I need for that pattern piece, so I can mark off my main panel. And now bottom trim. Oh. Let that cool. So let's see. Zipper panel stabilizer. We're just centering the stabilizer. And then we need to stabilize our connectors. Bottom panel, connectors, and bag butt. I'm struggling with the bottom panel so bad. Cause like, maybe, well it's a drop in. I, I'll do it, it's a drop in. I'm like, well it'd be really thick to turn. We don't have to worry about turning it, it's fine. Okay, seven eighths. Using these onto our connectors. As instructed in the pattern, which I definitely looked at and read what to do. Aha. 
Okay, near the bottom. Align the connector stabilizer short edge with the short edge of the connector. Center it along the short edge and repeat. Okay. Like so. So, got that. Bottom and bottom trim, okay. Oh, hello. I think I'm only gonna be able to get one of these out of this. Oh my God, how big is this? It's the perfect width, but not the perfect length. Cause I was like, well, maybe just try it. Can't do it. <laughs> okay, I guess I decided on Decaville light instead of heavy for the bottom. I didn't decide that, but my body was like, here's what you're doing. All right then, here we are. That's not enough, dang it. <laughs> I could do both, Ugh, that'd be a lot. We are cutting our bottom stabilizer out of Decoville Heavy. Truly contemplating, do I want to interface with both on that bottom panel? I, I don't know. Before I fuse that, I'm gonna snip my centers. my stabilizer piece. So that should be the end of everything we need to stabilize. I'm not cutting any woven interfacing out for these pieces. 
Although technically, <laughs> technically I could do this bottom piece. I'm just like, my top vinyl is thicker and this like, you can see how differently they drape. So I'm like, well, maybe if I added some woven stabilizer to this vinyl, it would have added structure. It's not much, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. Um, oh, I have some black Sofuse anyway. So why not? And then I'm just going to fuse this over Decaville. All right, I feel good about this. It'll be good. I just gently pressed it first to get rid of any wrinkles in the interfacing and then pressed it down. I was like, it didn't do anything, but it's still hot. So you can't really judge it. better. I think it's better. We'll find out. We will certainly find out. So if you want to check out the pattern and start organizing your packs as you're cutting, you can do that too. We still have our lining pieces, which luckily is not a whole lot. So if we just take it slow and fabric by fabric, following those rules, we can get it done. Like I said, I can turn off my heat press now, which I officially have done. So we can move on. I'm not adding any interfacing to any of these pieces. This water resistant canvas has enough structure. Hopefully you can kind of hear that like crunch that it has, um, but it's not a very thick fabric. Okay. Two of the main lining on the fold. And for this, I normally clip down. I have these really heavy metal pattern weights. Dorothy loves playing with these. The other day she was down here and she was like, would you like to buy a circle? Sure, I would love to buy a circle. <laughs> Thank you so much. This bag, like I mentioned earlier, is a drop-in lining bag. So 
So we don't need to worry about leaving an opening in our lining or anything like that. There is one. I'm gonna press it. It does not take much. There are our two main lining pieces. Done with the pattern piece, put it away. Main lining, divider, pocket exterior. And so that vinyl piece is just at the very top when you look in. So it's adding visual interest and stability without adding a ton of weight and bulk, making it all vinyl or anything like that. So that is good. And then I think the last couple of pieces are just rectangles. We've got our slip pocket, divider lining, and trim facing. And I'm almost tempted to start with the lining while I'm sewing this. I'm not going to, but I'm tempted is the thing. pocket. So I'm going to cut this part here to a straight edge. This next piece is bigger than my ruler is. But I can make up for it with another ruler. So I can cut out most of it and then I can move my other ruler to where it needs to be and then move this one, cut 
cut out my pocket. And this becomes the slip pocket with a little trim so I don't lose that. I'll find that now. This It's really interesting. This gets like folded down on itself. I might tape it centered and then you put right sides together, sew around and then flip it. So this is almost just like a little accented flap and it's great for little scraps. So I was like, huh, yeah, I'll try it. We'll see. So that's the fun of trying new patterns, right? Is to learn new techniques, new ways of doing things. So you may as well just try it. Okay. This is another one that's bigger than my ruler here, but that is okay. Because my ruler is eight inches wide, but I can lay this ruler down on top. Look at that extra little bit. And continue on cutting. Divider lightning. I hardly know her. I only have one of those right now, but I see this little spot here that would be perfect for my divider trim facing. So I will go ahead and do that now. We're almost done. I also love that she has a count of each piece so that you know what's what. That's cool. Okay, one more of the nine. And then I can use webbing for my strap, which is optional, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I think it'll look really nice. And we are ready to sew this. So I hope you will join me to sew this up. I hope you find the cutting videos helpful and I will see you all later.